Good day, everyone. So today I have prepared a video about the best TVs of 2022, and I would like to say right away that there will be no Philips, Xiaomi, Hisense, Panasonic, and so on. If they are not here, then I did not consider it necessary to add those to my video. In here, there will be TVs from LG, Samsung, and and Sony companies only. It just happened to be that I don't make videos based on any articles on the internet or similar videos on YouTube and I never ever remake it to fit my format nor give you just a transformed and adapted text. There is nothing like that. I work with Samsung, LG, Sony TVs, and on this basis I can draw my own conclusions, plus I have reviews from my customers. It is on these reviews that my vision in general and the compilation of this rating are based, you know? And if only in this way, to advise you something like, hey, take this Hisense, it is beautiful because they are sponsoring the World Cup, but it doesn't work like that. And then people will write to me, what did you advise me? Because this is not a TV, but some weird stuff, something strange. I will also not read all the information on the slides to you, but will simply accompany it with my comments. And before everything, be kind to subscribe, to give it a thumbs up and to share this video with someone you care about. Therefore, we turn to the first three TVs. We have here Samsung Q70B, QNet 8786 or 85 and Sony X85 or X89K. There is a wide choice of diagonals, some were less, some were more. Here the backlights are completely different. Edge LED backlight, mini LED from LG and direct LED from Sony. What is the difference? Edge LED lightning is a side lightning that has consequences such as glare. These lights, they will be visible in the dark, especially at night. These are spots, just terrible spots. If you want to know more about this, then check out my 2022 Samsung TV video. According to LG, this is mini LED, but as for me, it is still kind of crude technology. And something to say about it? That it is good. It is very good in terms of the fact that it has an IPS panel, it has wide viewing angles, and it is ideal for a sunny room. You will be happy in principle if you do not use this TV at night. The Sony TV has its chic color reproduction. It has always been this way and I hope it will continue. The direct LED backlighting is not as terrible as the edge LED, although you still won't get perfect black color there. In terms of brightness, Sony is certainly not very bright, especially if we remember how much this costs. And the 55th diagonal, of course, depending on the region, will cost you about $1,000-$1,200, and this is a lot, and therefore I recommend that you do not consider these models if you really take care of your eyes and want to get a good picture, because the difference with the TVs that I will show you next is literally a couple of hundred dollars, and it's worth considering, because you don't take a TV just for a month or so and not even for a year. So the next models are Samsung Q80B, LG QNet 91 and 90 and Sony 9 series X90K. Also Samsung and Sony have VA panel 120Hz, but there is already a change in backlighting. Sony and Samsung direct LED with local dimming is already much better than side edge lightning or just direct LED without local dimming. LG has has IPS, the same mini-LED backlight. What is the difference between series 8 and 9? 
you ask, if of course you are interested. And the fact that the 9 series has more local dimming zones, this is one of those huge differences that you will overpay for. That is, if you don't want to overpay, the picture on these TVs is plus or minus are the same. You don't need to clinch towards. This is really the biggest difference. In terms of brightness, these three TVs have already shown good results. The sound is also great, especially Samsung has a 60W subwoofer, LG also has very nice sound, but Sony somehow let it down this year. Sony just stands out with their picture, they apparently don't think that you need to make a cool sound in not very expensive TVs. After all, for Sony 9 series, LED TVs are not flagships. It is such an average. They don't think that you need to put good sound here because you always want to earn more money by selling a soundbar. Therefore, I advise you these three TVs because this is a golden mean in terms of price-quality ratio. Q80 and Sony are generally two brothers, between which people constantly choose and cannot decide which one to take. The difference is in the operating system, the difference in calibration out of the box, and the difference in all the same in ergonomics. Remote control, lags, of course. Uh, this doesn't matter to someone, but there are people who simply take another TV because of the remote control. So I advise you to consider the Sony 9 series and Samsung 8 series as such a basic but solid and affordable option. Move on. Our next two TVs are 4K TVs tops in their segment. This is a top from Samsung and a top from Sony. Samsung and Sony on VA panel 120Hz, both of them are on mini LED backlight, differences in the operating system, differences in brightness. Samsung has a crazy brightness and contrast ratio, but you also need to know that Samsung is unrealistic, fantastic and such, I like to call them plastic colors. Sony is more realistic picture, processing thanks to their processors and if you like something so unreal you want to look at the world from the other perspective you need to take Samsung and if you want a stable fine calibrated picture out of the box and see the real grass that it is on the football field and not such that it will be decorated with incomprehensible colors in general then look at Sony because I think they color reproduction is pretty much close to ideal. Our next two TVs are already OLED panels. This is LG C2 from LG, which is odd enough, and Sony A80K. This can be said to be the middle of OLED TVs, because there are 7 series of OLEDs and the 9s, and this is a middle. OLED panels, strangely, Sony uses panels from LG, but you don't need to immediately think that in this case Sony will look exactly exactly the same. There is a difference in the operating system, a difference in brightness. LG has achieved crazy results this year and this is very pleasing. In terms of sound, everything is fine as well. And here the distinction is again in processing, in the picture, in the operating system, the remote control, the legs, and that's it. LG C2 is such a versatile fighter that is great for any task, but do not forget that LED panels have a glossy display finish, that is, if you have a very sunny room and a lot of light gets on the TV, then you will be able to see not quite clear. Not quite is the key phrase here, because it does not mean that LED panels are not suitable at all, or they should only be taken into a dark room. To choose for yourself, I advise you to go see these two TVs in life and then make any conclusions. 
From the picture, the LG C2 will show itself better after you make at least some kind of adjustment, because the Sony will show better out of the box. And next in line we have four TVs. These are tops. There are better ones, but this will already be 8K. And these are the top 4K TVs this year. Samsung QS95B is a new OLED based on quantum dots. This is a completely new TV this year. Before that, Samsung resisted and did not want to buy mattresses from LG in any way. And this year they agreed, but naturally they said that this is a completely new technology. Partly it is, okay. They added a layer of quantum dots there as always. It seems to me that Samsung will add a layer of quantum dots to all of its products, if only to somehow present it from the other side. The next model is the LG G2 is a top TV. One such small correction here. LG G2 has a wall mount included. It does not have legs. The legs are sold separately, so get ready to pay another 150 euros. And Sony A95K is also a completely new TV. It can be compared in technology with Samsung QS95B. And the last one is Sony A90J. This is a 2021 model. Sony decided to transfer this model and continue to release it, since Sony A95K is a completely new one and you need to leave some kind of proven model, especially since there is an 83rd diagonal. So, these are all OLED TVs, 120 Hz. They differ in operating system, naturally in the picture, in color reproduction, in display coverage, brightness indicators, sound and such things as support for certain codecs file formats and so on. Because if we take LG or Samsung as an example here and you upload the movie to a USB flash drive, plug it in, you have 30% of content. If you don't load it at random, it simply will not load, because Samsung doesn't load all formats, neither the LG. Sony, on the other hand, is more like this, if I may so, more adapted to pirated content. It is an open operating system, so it is more versatile. To choose from these TVs, uh, you need to be puzzled completely, because it is very difficult to actually make a choice. Samsung is a very decent TV, crazy brightness for an OLED panel, excellent color reproduction, and when I saw and tested it for the first time, of course, I was very surprised, because it's really, really cool product, just like its cost, because it costs decent money and the 55th diagonal, again, do not clinch to the price tags, the 55th cost about one one and a half thousand to one thousand eight hundred dollars and sixty fifth diagonal cost around two thousand to three thousand even. LG G2 is a flagship TV, amazing, they also achieved crazy results this year in terms of brightness. I personally recommend it to you, especially if you want to hang it on the wall in a cool manner, because this is its own native mount, so it's called a gallery. You will have it hanging close to the wall and nothing, no gaps will be visible. The TV is the same in thickness and everything will look very nice. Sony A95K is like a good option, but I don't understand why they postponed their release of larger diagonals to next year, because 65 inches is already such, one might say, a past stage. People are already looking at larger diagonals. Well, Sony A90J is an old man, so to say it showed itself great. This is a very cool TV, and if you need 
need a larger diagonal and want to save money and not take a new OLED from Sony, then this is your option. It's my job to convey information to you because it's very difficult for me to say here uh, because each of these TVs is very worthy and they have both its advantages and disadvantages. And in order to understand this and figure it out for yourself, you go to the store and look. And in conclusion, a slide with 8K TVs. If the video is called the best, then 8K must be in this rating. There is a top-end TV from Samsung QN900B, three diagonal options, a 120Hz VA panel, a full-fledged 10-bit matrix mini LED. The brightness of HDR is off the charts. The contrast is also. The sound with support for Dolby Atmos 90 watt. LG Z2 on the slide. It has legs on the sides, but the 88 diagonal comes with a stand. It's also a crazy TV in a good sense, especially if we include demo videos. But we understand very well that demo videos we will watch with you once a year when friends come to us and we will show what a cool TV we have. In fact, to say some kind of crazy upscale, no. I personally think that it's too early to take 8K TVs because in two or three years, 8K TVs that will be, they will surpass those that are now and Sony Z9K. In general, the Sony Z series is the best thing I've ever seen regarding the picture aspect. It's beyond words, you need to see it. And the point here is not even that there is 8K resolution, but the point is how this TV processes the picture, depth, and in general, all these details, it's all just no words to describe. And if someone has the opportunity, stop by, see if there is such a thing in your city. There are crazy indicators in terms of sound, brightness, and there is almost nothing to complain about here, but maybe price only for some. So here is such a system we have. I hope I quickly convey to you information that is quite useful. And if you want to know more detailed specifications, in the description of this video you will find all the applicable links to another videos. That's it for this time. Thank you all for your attention. Please like, comment, share any of your thoughts, send this video to those who might find it helpful and simply support us if you want to see more similar videos. Have a great day!